right, here's what I want to do before I bring up this next guy. I want to start a wave of applause. We're going to start in that back corner of the room, and then we're going to come all the way over here. We're going to get this shit really loud. All right, you ready? From the back corner, starting. Clap, clap, clap. All the way across. All the way across. Fucking loud. Everybody, give it up for Mr. Jesse Jarvis. Hey everybody, happy one year anniversary everybody, and the one day anniversary since the last time I bombed. <laughs> so, um, people who complain a lot, I don't, it kind of bumps me out, the, pe the petty shit, you know, and they'll let it ruin their day, I was like, really, was your steak that bad, you know? And if you really think your day is that bad, you think this situation is that bad, go tell your story to a Holocaust survivor or someone in a fire hose blast that happened during the Civil Rights Movement. Just see how your story compares. Like, oh man, God, my girlfriend was bitching me out because of this hot chick I was talking to on the internet. Then I went to Blockbuster, they didn't have Paul Blart Mall Cops, and so now I gotta put it on my Netflix queue. Today just sucks, man. You seem sad too, what's wrong? Well, I don't remember what true happiness is like. <laughs> and the woman that I love more than anything in the entire world, <laughs> she left me for a member of Hall and Oates. <laughs> well, which one was it? Was it Hall or was it Oates? in your queue before you get Paul Blart. So, like, you kind of win. I understand. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I wrote this, uh, uh, this opinion op-ed article for a newspaper, but they wouldn't publish it because people are afraid of the truth. So I'm going to read it. All right. All right, yeah, this is the... This is the article I wrote. <clears throat> People who fart in public. Seriously, cut it out. <laughs> if you're old, you get a bit more leeway. Why? You fought in two wars, you made a marriage last. You know what? You earned your right to fart in public. And you shouldn't care who it affects. That being said, there should be some courtesy behind it. For example, one day I'm sitting in the lobby. Old man stands up and just lets all of that intestinal gravy rumble just slide ever so gently through his pleated khakis. This wasn't the only time he did it. Takes about five more steps, lets more release. This one seemed like it gave him a sense of relief and the freedom from the tyranny of gas-related pain. After this, he turns to the left, takes about five or six more steps, and by this time, I know what's coming. He's gonna let that roaring lion out of the gate. I, I kind of memorized some of this. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the wrong line out of the gate. Great. If you fought in a war, you'd have some pent up gas too. Uncle Sam would cold cock you in the fucking face if you didn't allow your colon the freedom to sing and the opportunity to let freedom ring. Yeah, they didn't publish it. I'm glad you're clapping. You, maybe you enjoy truth. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you can't tell by this amazing body, I'd probably make the world's worst fucking stripper. <laughs> and even if they offered an abs of flab kind of night, it still wouldn't, it's, even if they offered abs of flab night, it, it still doesn't make up for the fact that I'm a shitty dancer, you know? And, like, I haven't found a store that has, that's actually sells, you know, proper sequence jewelry for my junk that I would need to dazzle on stage. And I would imagine the intro would go something like, Coming to the stage is Jesse, the hottie with the flabby body Jarvis. Look out, ladies. This 24 unemployed art school graduate enjoys overanalyzing the past, has an irrational fear of intimacy. <laughs> oh yeah, don't mind that horrible electric slide routine he's doing. 
<laughs> and don't worry about the fact that he's crying. He's just working out his issues because his dad didn't high five him enough. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's my time, everybody. Y'all have a good night. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Anthony. Have a great night. Uh, we're going to keep things going here. Uh, next guy up hosts a show at the Camel called uh, Camel D. Is it Al Camel D or just Camel? Okay, Camel? Whatever you want to call it. It's whatever you want to call it. Ladies and gentlemen, please give this guy a nice round of applause. Mr. Dave Hambrick. Dave Hambrick. Hey, what's up? So, Cafe Diem one year anniversary is pretty cool, right? Give a big hand to Joe for putting it on. Pretty big hand. Pretty awesome. Uh, I've been doing comedy for a little under a year, and I've learned some important rules. I'm going to share them with you. Um, first of all, don't ever talk about herpes straight for five minutes. <laughs> it raises some eyebrows when you're done. Um, second, no matter how laughably small and crooked it is, don't pull your penis out. And if there are any black people in the audience, racist jokes are not cool. So I guess that's not good. Uh, you got, I got to apologize. I'm, I'm a little upset today. I went to a funeral for a really good friend. It was, it was, it's, it's, yeah, it's really sad. I'm sorry I'm breaking up a little bit, but um, I, I had to give a eulogy, and uh, I learned some important rules about giving a eulogy. First of all, don't talk about herpes for five minutes straight. No matter how laughably small and crooked it is, don't pull your penis out. If there are any black people in the audience, don't tell racist jokes. It doesn't go over well. Uh, so I was getting a lap dance recently. Yeah. Was... Woo! Thanks, guy. It wasn't from him. I, I, dang, I don't know. I'd love to drink. But the stripper had big fake boobs, which was awesome. And I'm like, I like your boobs. And she's like, thank you for liking my boobs. I have names for them. I'm like, oh, that's neat. <laughs> oh, what are their names? Oh, how rude of me not to ask. And she said, Mary Kate and Ashley. <laughs> uh, that, she didn't really laugh like that. That's just me. Uh, and I was like, why is that? And she's like, because they're cute and they're worth a lot. <laughs> and I was like, that's funny, because I have a name for your vagina, Bob Saget. Because <laughs> it seemed friendly enough at first, but it turned out to be a real dirty motherfucker later. <laughs> Who knew that full house meant a snatch full of herpes? <laughs> Broke the first rule of comedy <laughs> and eulogy giving. Uh, I think about the English language a lot because I like to talk. And um, I invented a new word. It's vegetarianarian, but I don't have a definition yet. I think it's either one, cannibals that only eat people that only eat vegetables, or it's a really racist guy that only eats vegetables. A vegetarianarian. Hey, oh. My ex-boyfriend, shit, I fucked that joke up. My ex-girlfriend thinks I might be gay. I can't figure out why. What else do I got? What other shitty jokes? Oh, here's one. It recently occurred to me that a lot of my anxiety dreams are a lot like experiences at the gym, such as, I'm sure you're familiar with this one, I'm running as hard as I can, and no matter what, I just can't seem to escape Glenn Beck. It's like being on the treadmill and someone left Fox News on in front of me. <laughs> or, or, or like, I'm in a public place, and there's a bunch of weird old people who are naked touching me. Well, that's like being in the locker room at the gym. I don't like the locker room. Or, or, or there's a midget wearing a Darth Vader helmet chasing me around with a blowtorch. 
Well, I haven't really had a dream like that, but my yoga class is weird. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I'm gonna do this because I haven't seen the light yet, so I wanna, it's a good old joke. It's a, one that I told here first. Um, I was really high recently. I was watching Cartoon Network and jerking off to Dora the Explorer. Because uh, I imagine that she's like, Why do you do beating me culo? I'm like, yay. <laughs> See, I will. Um, and I, oh, fuck, I fucked that up. No, I really did fuck this one up. The other one was a joke, but this is real. Oh, no, Captain Planet came on. Do you remember Captain Planet? Yeah. He was like, he was, if you're not familiar with him, he was like a cross between a Smurf and Keanu Reeves but with, a, with a green mullet. And like he had those kids who would call him and he would appear out of nowhere and punch a terrorist in the face and stop them for dumping oil on a panda bear or what the fuck ever. And I always wondered what happened if only like two of those kids could show up. They were like, oh my God. Uh, George Bush is going crazy. The Exxon or BP is leaking oil all over the Gulf of Mexico or whatever. We gotta stop them. But there's only two of us. Well, we've never tried this before, but here goes. And they put their rings together, and out just comes this unspeakable, horrible thing. It's like a quivering blue leg and a red boot. <laughs> Captain Planet, is that you? Drive hybrids. Oh, I guess it is you. <laughs> I love that sound. Use it for anything. It's like, what's that over there? I don't know. Let's not go over there. Like, what's in the basement? Grandma. That girl just lifted up her skirt. There's a penis there. I can describe that. I don't need a sound effect. Gross. All right, guys, let me get out of here. But, um,. I just wanted to tell you recently, uh, I, I, I love comedy because it's helped me transition into uh, my political career. I'm a poli-sci major, it's awesome. And uh, I've been doing a lot of public speaking and I've learned uh, three important rules about public speaking. But I don't feel like sharing them with you. So thank you a lot. My name's Dave Hammer, good night. Hey. How's everybody doing? Yeah. You're all still good? Uh, this next guy I just found out was the lead in uh, the sixth grade play of Anne of Green Gables. So uh, I guess that means he was Anne, right? Is that Anne? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Jared Cullum. Jared Cullum. All right. One year. Bye, everybody. <laughs> uh, I'm Jared. I was uh, born in a small town uh, near West Virginia, and there was like nothing there. Like all we had was like sticks and Mountain Dew stained teeth. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess, like in all fairness, I should say Mountain Dew stained tooth. Uh, unless you're speaking of them collectively. But I moved from there to Dallas, Texas. And when I got there, someone was like, hey, where are you from? And I was like, Virginia. And he goes, ugh, Yankees. <laughs> uh, I am not a geographer, uh, nor do I happen to have any maps. But I'm pretty sure you're an idiot, sir. <laughs> Beautiful weather we have. I've been uh, out on the motorcycle a lot. I've noticed, though, since I got a motorcycle, that everywhere you go, the first thing people say is, oh, you came on a motorcycle? Ah, oh, it's a good thing you didn't get hit or flip over the handlebars or snap your neck. I'm like, thanks for, um, my day's fine, thanks for asking, asshole. But I never do that to people. I'm never like, oh, you walked here. Oh, it's a good thing you didn't get beat up or robbed or raped and stabbed to death. <laughs> Oh, he just flew in. Oh, that's great. It's a good thing the plane didn't careen out of control and then burst into flames. And then in the flaming molten wreckage, when your naked burning body was just running away, you just get raped and stabbed to death. <laughs> I had to go to a doctor. I went in and I noticed I got their MD at a Christian university. 
Uh, but Christians inherently reject science. So this is my new test. If I go in, if the doctor comes in, I say, how old do you think the Earth is? If they say 6,000 years, I say, fuck it, I'll sew it myself. <laughs> Wait, this is pretty serious. How do you feel about dinosaurs? Awesome. Yes, I came here on a motorcycle. <laughs> so I was in the park and I saw these two kids talking. I was a little boy and a little girl and the little boy said, thank God for the rain. And the little girl went, no. <laughs> you don't thank God for the rain. You thank science. <laughs> I love that interaction. It reminds me of my brother-in-law. Uh, and me, because we don't get along. We're complete opposites. He's like really fundamentalist and religious, and I'm not crazy. <laughs> and we don't get along, but we make a great sitcom. You know what I'm saying? Cut to a living room, and I come out in a town like, who used all the hot water? And he's like, these queers are trying to get married. <laughs> 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 Did you eat the last bologna? <laughs> Mexicans are stealing our jobs. <laughs> but he's really conservative and he's scared of everything. He's always talking about communism and the Chinese taking over. I'm like, whoa, 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 lay off the Chinese, man. They're magical people. Even their cookies can see the future. <laughs> All I'm saying is I've never had an Oreo promise me fame and fortune. <laughs> In bed. <laughs> mistake of debating with him. He goes, I'll tell you where all the trouble of the world started. It began when they started teaching evolution in school, because you can't teach evolution. It's just a theory. There's no proof. Like gravity. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> but in the end, in the end, my brother-in-law, uh, we had an argument in the end. He said, you know what, Jared, I love you. And despite our differences, I still thank God that I know you. And I said, no. You don't thank God that you know me. You thank science. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that movies uh, where someone comes back from the future, they're always like really trim and athletic and lasery? Like, they're never miserable. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a genuine fear I have. I'm going to open the door one day, and there's me, and he's like 20 years older and balding and fat, and he smells like Mountain Dew and failure. And he's, he's got a KFC bucket full of Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> he's just like, you got an Xbox? What year is this? Did you come here on a motorcycle? <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my wife and I, this is true, next week is our uh, one year anniversary. Oh, fuck it, two years. <laughs> two years. I'm not out there. No, it's two years, it's two years. And it has been wonderful. I have, I have no complaints. Because my wife is wonderful. She's the, she's the complete yin to my yang. Because she's absolutely brilliant. She's the smartest person I've ever met. This is how smart she is. She'll give directions using mile markers. I'm the only fucker that doesn't know what to, how to work. <laughs> she, she's like, I'm at mile, mile marker 89. I'm like, 89 miles to or from what? I don't know. Like, she might as well be like, you're going to go 20 nautical miles north. Uh, go left. You'll go about a furlong. It should take about a fortnight. I didn't know mile marker. I, like, I thought they were like ruins of an ancient civilization. <laughs> Because I don't know, I have a phone with a GPS. Like, I, I never use anything with that. But then you know what happens? My GPS says to turn left into a lake. I'm a tool of my own tools. And my tools are biting me in the ass. It's going to take forever to fish out her Camry. She's going to be pissed. I love my wife. Uh, she's wonderful. But I will say this about her. She's my absolute harshest critic. I was leaving the house yesterday. She goes, don't leave in that shirt. It looks fat on you. <laughs> Thank God it's the shirt. I was beginning to get worried. 
Can you pass me that bucket of Sour Patch Kids? <laughs> Thank you all very much. I'm Jerry Cullen. Around like a madman with the microphone off. Hey, uh, guys, we got another Charlotte's Vinian. Is that is that how you go, Charlotte? Something. Uh, this guy's from Charlottesville. How about that? Uh, yeah, Charlottesville. Uh, let's give him a warm round of applause, Mr. Uh, Brad Foster. Brad Foster. All right, um, in response to Jerry, I have, a, I have to feel that I just have to uh, combat that, so I'm going to read to you from the Bible, and hopefully that will uh, tell you why he's so flawed. This is the story of the fall of man. Now the serpent, being the horniest and most perverted of all the animals, approached Adam and asked, Did God really say you could not eat in his garden? Adam answered, I may eat of any tree in the garden, but I may not eat of the bush. <laughs> it is only of the bush that God said, I may not eat, or even touch it, or I will be most unhappy. The serpent said, you will not be unhappy. The moment you eat of it, you will be like gods, or at least make Eve cry out that name. <laughs> Adam saw that the bush was good pleasing to the eye, and desirable for gaining fellatio. <laughs> so he ate it. <laughs> then the eyes of both of them were opened, and Adam saw what he had done, and Eve saw what she would have to do in return. <laughs> and in shame, Adam did cover himself with lambskin. When the Lord God discovered what they had done, he was displeased. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply the distemper you have towards man. All that he does will cause you frustration. Your only remnants of joy will come at the expense of his sorrow. And the only way to alleviate your burden will to be asked questions to which there are no right answers. <laughs> like, what are you thinking? Do you think that angel is prettier than me? And do these fig leaves make me look fat? <laughs> to Adam, God said, because you have eaten of the bush, which I commanded you not to, I will increase your desire for it 10,000 fold <laughs> and decrease Eve's willingness equally. <laughs> and for one week of each cycle, she shall have no desire to give it to you at all. And even if she did, you wouldn't want it. <laughs> so Adam and Eve were cast out of Eden. They saw all they had lost and were sick at heart. And Adam said to Eve, You know, none of this would have happened if you'd let my snake in the garden first. <laughs> the word of the Lord. <laughs> Take that, Jerry. Uh, you guys having a good night? I am. And I need a good night, too, because I had a fucked up weekend. <laughs> I got a call from my ex-girlfriend, but this wasn't just a ex-girlfriend, it was the ex-girlfriend, you know, the one that got away, the one that could have been, the one who broke my heart, the first girl I ever loved, the bitch, the slut, the whore, number one on the angry, drunken speed dial at 1am, that ex-girlfriend. She's calling because she wants me to be the first to know that she's getting married. The first to know? On the list of people that she thinks wants that information, why am I even on it, let alone at the top? And if that wasn't enough to ruin my whole world, she needs someone to walk her down the aisle. And guess who she asked? What the fuck, over? Two years ago, I'm her boyfriend. Today, I'm her dad. How the hell did that happen? When we were dating, I thought it was sexy as hell when she used to call me daddy. Never thought that was going to come back and bite me in the ass. And I, I tried to be the bigger man. I, I said, you know, I'm, I'm happy that you found someone. The next time you're in Charlottesville, what, the three of us will go out and celebrate. 
And she says, well, that's not going to happen anytime soon. JJ is not allowed to leave Lynchburg. <laughs> Why, you ask? Because he's on probation for having illicit photos on his computer of a 13-year-old girl. This is the guy I finished second to. <laughs> I honestly don't know if I should be insulted or relieved. <laughs> Let's face it, I just dodged one major white trash bullet there. I'm not walking her down the aisle, but I've got to go to that wedding. I mean, how often do you get ringside seats to a petter ass freak show? <laughs> the rehearsal dinner is at Chuck E. Cheese, which is convenient because that's also where they've registered. And uh, they're getting married in the backyard. Not for romantic reasons, there just isn't a chapel less than a thousand yards from his property. And probably the best part is that the wedding date they set is October 31st. They're getting married on Halloween. Kind of gives new meaning to the phrase trick or treat, doesn't it? That's my time. Thanks a lot, guys. All oh, right, guys, uh, I just met our next comedian on Friday. Uh, he was at the Curmudgeon's Comedy uh, Show there in uh, uh, Wabi Sabi, right? This guy tore it up, real nice guy. Everybody give it up for Mr. Corey Marshall. Corey Marshall. How y'all doing, Cafe Dio? Uh, let's give it up, man. This is the one year anniversary for Cafe Dio. It's like the anniversary of Tommy and Richmond and um, Joe Hafke. We meet Joe Hafke. Let's give it up for Joe Hafke for keeping this thing going. Is this stuff in the building? I can't really see, but the lights. All right, thanks, man, you know, for receiving me and everything. Um, I just want to, you know, start out by saying, I know I'm up here. Um, I don't fit a lot of Mexican stereotypes. True. That's it for that joke. <laughs> All right, here's another one. I just found out this fact about goldfish. Any goldfish lovers in here? All right. I found out that if you keep a goldfish in the dark, after a long period of time, it'll turn white. Did you know that? I think this is my parents maybe sleep with a nightlight when I was younger. You know, it'd be kind of awkward explaining why there's a, a white goldfish in the bed. I see how I flipped that. You it's not all comedy gold, but it was, yeah. Um, earlier, somebody was, you know, um, when the comedian was talking about conversation things, that, and I had a thought. You know, when you, when you meet somebody and um, you say, how you doing? And they say, how you doing? They don't answer your question. It's frustrating. So I'm thinking, you know, what if we did that with like, every single time somebody asks you a question, but like, hey man, what time is it? What time is it? <laughs> You know why I pulled you over? You know why I pulled you over? <laughs> That's it for that joke. This, this. <laughs> uh, I'm a Virgo. Uh, my wife is a Cancer. I'm thinking about wearing a, a pink ribbon because it's just like having the Cancer. You know, she's starting to grow. I'm losing my hair. And, um,. Somebody asked me, you know, well, what's the cure of cancer? And I said, divorce. You know, it's true. You know, uh, I am going through a divorce right now. It's not one of the easiest things to deal with. You know, but I find out that women, they drop hints when a relationship is over. You know, they kind of say things like, I'm leaving. And you know, like, um, she'll come home and I'll be like, honey! And she'll like, punch me in the throat or something like that. And you know, I kind of, I didn't pick up on the little hints, you know, I first found out she left me on Facebook and on MySpace. You know, that kind of hurt, you know, because I was like her first friend. And then I go back there and Tom was just like, I was like, oh man, what's up? But um, yeah, it, it's, it's a, I, hold on, let me explain. I do stutter in case you haven't noticed. But um, I don't know if you all are really cafe DM and stuff like that, How, that didn't sound right. <laughs> yeah, but have you ever seen Joe Hafke's comedy? He got this bit and he's, it's so funny. He's like the 1950s comedian. It's a funny bit, you gotta catch it. Hopefully he does it tonight. This is kind of like my dedication to Cafe Deal. 
and the Joe Hafke. You know, I got this bit, and it's my version of, I don't have a name yet, but let's just say it's the 1850s comedian. <laughs> 1850s. Now, when I first came to Cafe, hold on, I'm not starting yet. But when I first came to Cafe did Ca Cafe Diem, <laughs> you know, I was like black, <laughs> and you know, there's a lot of you know Caucasian comedians, and every now and then you make Kevin sound like a racist joke, and there are lights in your face, so you really can't see who's out there. And I did throw a chair the first time, you know, somebody you know said something, but don't throw any chairs up here tonight. You know, because I'm really babbling right now. But anyhow, the 1850s comedian, this is really offensive for black people. <laughs> so hopefully there's no black people in the crowd tonight. <laughs> but the 1850s comedian, inspired by the set of Joe Hafke. So if you know his set, you enjoy this, all right? <laughs> How's your house doing? <laughs> The other day, my wife was washing on the washboard. <laughs> the washboard. <laughs> and I see it. I stole this from the future. When the guy said, you better hide it. He's going to take credit. I got my freedom papers the other day. I, I didn't read it. Because I can't. But I just want somebody to read it for me. Master Hafke, can you come on up there for a minute, sir? Can you just read my freedom paper, sir? <laughs> Dear Book Magazine. Which one is it? Well, I guess I'll be at work tomorrow. Here's a good one. Two white men walked into a bar. I don't know what happened after that. Really, a young lady was, well, the young man was saying how he touched on the African American woman. I hit on a white woman the other day, and a white man hit on me. <laughs> That's it for that one. <laughs> I got an idea. You might want to spread it around. I found out now <laughs> that at six o'clock there's gonna be some people trying to go up north. <laughs> now you ain't gonna spot them, but trust me, if you see some niggas look like this, stop them. <laughs> Yeah. Come on, Marshall. 
everyone. Fucking fantastic. Really good stuff. Really good. Uh, woo! Uh, God damn, that was good. Um, 